Welcome back to Championship Court here at the LAPP Newport Beach Open Men's Doubles Quarterfinal. Bottom of your screen in the white, Ryler DeHart on the left, his partner Will Sobeck on the right. They are facing Spencer Lanier and Zach Taylor at the top. Lanier and Taylor took game one 11-7. It's five all here in the second. Yeah, it's team, team I picked today is in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's been uh, somewhat of a, a subdued matchup right now. A lot of long rallies with consistent dinking, but both teams try not to pull the trigger too early. So back coming off of a bronze medal in mixed doubles alongside Amanda Hendry after he played that phenomenal semifinal against Christine Maddox and Max Manthel. Oh, great defense. Stab back so in. good. and it's fitting that Sobek gets the winner. Well, and that's the second ATP from that same position on this side for Sobek. And he, you see how he hooks that paddle and hooks that wrist and just brings it back nicely. That time, DeHart not able to make the pickup. Well, Chad, you hit on it. We've been sitting here watching this match for a while now, and a lot of elongated points. It's just taking a while to set anything up. And, again, the hands of all four of these gentlemen is the key. You don't want to pull the trigger too early. Which team do those long grinded out points favor? I think they favor DeHart and Sobek, yeah. actually. I don't think I'd ever say that about Riley DeHart, but it's true. <laughs> That goes into the net another point. Why do you say that, though, about Just DeHart and Sobek? Well, again, it's – well, Sobek's going to grind you out. That's been his nature since he started playing pickleball, you know, 12, 13 years ago. Um, Ryler DeHart used to be a lot, a lot of power. Now he's really learned that doubles game and really learn to stay in points longer and set things up. Listen, they can score quickly, just like that five-hole winner from Sobek. Eight-five lead here in game number two as – Taylor and Lanier taking a timeout as they find themselves trailing by three. Well, and this was a similar spot for DeHart and Sobek in, in game one. They, were, they had a relatively comfortable lead. I believe it was 7-4. And then Lanier and Taylor just got on a little bit of a run. They, they found some spots to apply some pressure. But here in game two, you know, it's, it's almost like a refeeling out process. <laughs> of Taylor has tried to, to to speed that up and pull the trigger, but the defense of DeHart and Solbeck, they've reset every attack that's come from Taylor. Both sides coming off of round of 16 matches that went the distance. This one trending that direction should DeHart and Sobek be able to close it out. DeHart, the former University of Illinois star, lives in Bel Air, Florida now, alongside his wife, Megan Fudge. As we are back to play here on Championship Court. So that backhand flick just a little long. Yeah, it just came out a little flat. You saw Sobek get up on his toes right there. Tried to punch it through, but didn't have that face closed enough. 
Oh, that one's sale. Missed return. Well, the weather is a little bit warmer today than it was yesterday. Doesn't feel like it in the car. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> if you get out in the sun, it, it is a little <laughs> few degrees. Yeah, the fog didn't stay around as long this morning. Good spot from Lanier and the ability to stay out of the kitchen, too. Well, he got that ball down is the key right there. He sits on that and finds that hole in the middle, and Sobek was almost leaning to the left side just enough. He reaches for it in the middle but can't get that. Back-to-back -back points, Lanier and Taylor back within one. Sobek puts it just out of reach of Lanier. Second serve coming. That's a big wingspan to get a pass, too. Big boy. Oh, good what ball a movement. Roll. Yeah, that's that's good ball movement there from Linnea and Taylor. It's the one down the line. You see the heart kind of split with Solbeck right there. Solbeck went left expecting that Taylor was going to push that ball inside out and go back out to the backhand. Oh, oh he got, got it. it. Oh, it hit uh, his paddle. Lanier <laughs> says, yep, that hit me. It hit Spencer and comes drops in. Watch out, a little friendly fire there off the paddle of Zach Taylor. Eight all. Oh, can't miss that one right there. DeHart knows it too. When you miss balls like that, what happens? I mean, you gotta let it go. That's the hard part in pickleball. Mentally, it gets you. You're still thinking about it right now. That'll help. I, I should have you, phrased you, the question better. I, I know better. what you're yeah. saying. You, Why did he miss that? Yes. Yes. And, yes. and you heard the heart say, come on, yeah. move. It was the feet got a little bit wide and he got flat footed. So now you stand up through the shot a little bit more. And, and what that does is as you stand up, you're focusing on bottom of the ball. As you stand up, it now becomes top of the ball and it comes out flat into the net. And so back has picked them up. Back to back points gives them game point 10-8. Right down the middle, we will go to three. So back into heart, take game two, 11-8. We'll be back with game three here on Championship Court. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. At Typical Insurance, you're just another senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to health care. At the Botanist, we always look further, seeing potential where others may not. 
We sustainably hand forage 22 Isla Botanicals to make a beautifully balanced gin, capturing the essence of our Scottish island home. Consciously crafted by our community to be enjoyed by yours. Look for them. Take a look at our good idea game point that sent us to a winner take all game three. Yeah, and a little switch of momentum here for Solbeck and the heart. And then sliding that one through the middle. A little miscommunication there between Lanier and Taylor. We're going to game three. I don't almost say we may see Zach Taylor come out be a little bit more aggressive here to start game three. I think the look that he gave you says maybe so. Point to start off the third game. Winner of this one will advance to the semifinal where they will meet Rob Nunnery and ATN Blazkowicz. That's an interesting team this weekend. I think DeHart got a verbal warning. He got warning. a verbal, but said he was talking to himself. I think she just overturned it right now. 1-0-2. So a couple of missed pickups, and it's two quick points for Taylor and Lanier to start Game number three. Hey, you see Solbeck right there mimicking the footwork that, footwork that he should have done. Got a little stuck on that one. The ball got behind that left foot. Got the first net cord, couldn't get the second. So like you said, Chad, Taylor's trying to be a little more aggressive right here. Even with his dinking, right? He's not going that cross court constantly with Sobek. He changed his spot up, went into the middle two on that one, and then looked to pull the trigger. DeHart oh. and Sobek on the board. I almost thought Lanier was going to speed that one up right there, and it potentially did change his mind. It was just a little flick of the wrist. Oh, misdirection from Taylor. Yeah, well, a good spot right there from Taylor. Yeah, and you heard DeHart right as he's about to hit this. He talks to Sobek and goes, watch. Meaning don't crash, I'm not dropping this, I'm driving this. And Sobek did get caught though. That's the heart we're, we're used to seeing right there, stepping up and putting some mm -hmm. pressure on. Already feels like there have been a lot more drives from Ryler to Hart here in these last few points than there were in game number two. Like you said it, right? There's more drives from him. And it's more drives to set up the point, right? Like, I, I'd rather him drive a third almost every time. Yeah. It's such a good drive. And then hit a drop maybe on the fifth. But set that up. Oh, so bad. Getting Slippery. Taylor back. Yeah. You, get a little, you get a little edge guard with it, too. Just a little slippery. Yeah, bottom edge. Four-point run for Sobek and DeHart. Too strong off the paddle of Lanier. It's a three-point lead. Yeah, it's a nice little trigger pull right there from William Sobek. The best thing about what William's doing with that trigger pull, he knows that his first ball is not going to be a winner by any means. He knows the next one's coming back, so he's ready for that next ball to do something with it. Oh, 
Taylor trying to roll it a little bit too low below the net. Well, it's just when you see him reach, the face is open a little bit. So it's, it's more difficult, and you have to try to shape it more with the, with the hand. So, yeah, potentially a little bit low, but it's a difficult roll there anyway. What should he have done with the ball instead then? Uh, I mean, he take that one out of the air 100%. But, you know, that's potentially one where you take it out of the air, you push inside out, pull so back out wider, try to get him to float something down the line, and then Lanier can reach in and, and put a little bit more pressure on as well. Into the end change, DeHart and Sobek up 6-2 here in game number three. What's been the biggest difference, Dom, in the way that the early part of game three is played out? Well, I mean, you hit it on the head. You're almost close to not needing Chad and I in here anymore. <laughs> as you hit it right on the head, though, you're seeing more drives from DeHart right now, right? We're seeing that attack mode to slow, right? I'd rather him play fast to slow than slow to try and speed up. He's got his ways, and they work for him. So don't kind of get away from that. Go with this power play on the third, and then if you have to, you drop the fifth. We've talked about that at length throughout this tournament. Play your game and don't change it based on your opponent. As Sobek gets a little big there at the line, side out. Perfect well, side out. Yeah, he was, he was right there. You actually saw the paddle head a little too upright, so the ball came out flat. Ooh, nice combo from Sobek and with the fancy finish. How many times do we see it's not the ATP that's the, the star shot or the, 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 the instant replay that you're going to see. It's always the block. So Sobek reads that, knows it's coming back, and then finishes. Oh, that was a big overhead from DeHart. Quick side out. Well, and that's what I was going to say. It's trouble when DeHart's hitting an overhead. More than Maddox? Eh, it's my toss up. Couldn't shape it quite enough on the ATP. Another point for Sobek into Hart. Well, it was there. He had plenty of room here. He just doesn't slow, get slow. around it either. S slowed the swing down a little as well. Overcooked that. Second serve on the way. That's all right. Air, air on the aggressive side right now for the Hart with the third shot drive. Oh, no, almost <laughs> got it, but the <laughs> sheer amount of balls that Will Sobek makes you hit is ridiculous. Well, DeHart as well. Both Sobek and DeHart, very, very strong defensively. But, yeah, the, the scramble by Sobek, that's that's the consistent <laughs> thing that we see constantly, you know, all the time. DeHart really peppering that back corner <laughs> until he got the opening he wanted. That was close, though. Mm -hmm. I think it was a lot closer than he wanted, but, again, dots that back line. And again, forcing Taylor into the back corner. Well, and that's a tough ball there to try to take cross court because it was coming back with a little bit of pace from DeHart. You saw Taylor try to really snap the wrist. Ooh, oh, tried slide. to slide it down the line. 
Ooh. Call overturned. It was in. <laughs> Riley's going to get in trouble for propositioning gambling to the referee. <laughs> Good adjustment from Sobek. Great communication from DeHart. Yeah, and again, he's talking constantly to his partner. Great job right there, and good job answering after the call he did not agree with. He's still asking <laughs> us here in the booth if we saw it. It was hard for us to see anything from our vantage point. Oh, it was a good idea. It's Sobek. We saw that a couple of times in mixed doubles yesterday. Sobek on those high balls really hooks the hooks the wrist, and at times it just forces that ball straight down. Hands battle goes the way of Sobek and DeHart. Second serve coming. Well, and difference there is Sobek and DeHart short and compact. Lanier and Taylor trying to get a little bit bigger to try to add more power. I'll tell you, third. the difference for me, too, from game one into game two and now into game three for Sobek and DeHart is they're loose. They're loose right now. DeHart's walking he's past still, the booth. He still, still wants to see it. it. Um, <laughs> he's going to have to go back and watch the, the YouTube feed later and freeze that. But, again, it's the looseness, right? Like, as, as fun and, and as loose as they are, that's when both of them are playing well. And when you have DeHart talking – a lot of people, that hurts their game, right? For Ryler, when he's talking active, kind of joking back and forth, you know he's loose. And when he's loose, he's dangerous. When he's tight, not talking and quiet, that's when I'm like, okay, you got to loosen up. So right now, he's playing really well, and he's loose. He's talking. He's communicating. I like this you know, side of them. It's giving them a 2 lead here in game three. A much more serious conversation going on in the other corner between Taylor and Lanier. What should that conversation be about right now? Well, right now, Taylor and Lanier, they're, they're, they're a little off balance. Um, the, the, the opportunities that they've had, the heart and Sobek have, have really stifled it. They've just reset it and, and got it back down. I think you know, if Lanier and Taylor get the opportunity is they need to kind of start things off being aggressive and put the pressure on coming forward, similar to what DeHart and Solbeck have done here, rather than getting up to the kitchen line and then allowing Solbeck and, and DeHart to move that ball around. And Lanier has the ability to, to, to play big and, and to play fast, and, and Taylor has a lot of power. Yeah. Side out. Good spot right there. A little in between. It looked like DeHart was going to go for it and then kind of backed off it. And Sobek was a little late getting to it. DeHart frustrated, thought that ball may be going out. Well, it was potentially going out, but going back to that backhand flip from Taylor, that was a really good flick and a good spot. Solbeck just blocking it, kept him in that point. Oh, what a move from Sobek. I mean, Sobek, not the tallest guy or length-wise, but he gets everything right there. <laughs> but he hears me say that. But, again, he, it's a good move and good setup. But that's the downside of Lanier and Taylor playing, like, so slow right there is that even if, even if Sobek moves. I'll finish my thought here in a second. There's a better overhead from Sobek. Even even if even if Sobek moves right there and the Ernie's not, it's enough time 
to just let that ball bounce and come back. There's there's no even in the dinks right now. It's not really forceful. It's not a pressure dink. It's not it's not moving Sobek and the heart around enough. I don't know if you guys heard him, but Sobek said first Ernie of my life after that. I find that hard to believe. See, that's, that's an issue for me. Taylor's going to the same spot over and over again. William Sobeck has done that his whole life. Like, you're putting a guy who likes that spot and likes that backhand dink in rhythm. You have to take him out of rhythm. Yeah, Good that's spot from Taylor. And that's a, that's a bet of speed up right there, and they – Lanier and Taylor did uncoil out of the stack. They're putting Lanier on the left now. So Lanier and Taylor able to get back on serve. Well, I like this matchup here now. I like putting Spencer Lanier on the left and Taylor on the right. Gives a little more scare in the middle with Lanier. His big forehand there. So I like this matchup. We'll see if they're going to stick with it right here. Well, and Lanier takes a lot more balls out of the air than what Taylor was doing. So that's cutting down the reaction time of, of DeHart and Solbeck, moving that ball around a little bit more. And a lot of the time, it's just that half step is the difference. Missed third as DeHart was crashing. And what you saw two points ago was Lanier didn't dink a ball the same spot more than once. He moved that ball sideline to sideline in the middle, Move the ball around. It was a great job by Spencer Lanier. And now they got a little momentum putting him on the left-hand side. DeHart and Sebek trying to stall that momentum, calling a timeout as their lead is at four, two points away from moving on to the semifinal. You talked about moving Lanier over to the left, puts his forehand in the middle. What is the primary counter that DeHart and Sobek need to make to that? Well, they're trying to right now. They're trying to move the ball just as much, which I like, but again, it's – going to be who's going to flinch first here, right? It's almost like a game of chicken where they're just moving the ball in and out. No one's really pressure dinking. They're pushing a lot of these dinks. I'd like to see one, DeHart and Sobek really pressure a dink, get into a dink and try and put some pressure on Lanier and Taylor, move them back off that kitchen line, maybe get a pop-up. But right now, like I said, it's a game of chicken. Who's going to flinch first? Who's going to be the one to pull that trigger first and get into that firefight? Sobek and DeHart took game two, 11-8, after Lanier and Taylor won the first 11-7. That is how we arrived at this winner-take-all game three here on Championship Court. Our men's doubles. We have two more tickets to punch to Championship Sunday. Men's and women's singles is set as is mixed. Men's doubles, women's doubles wide open today. First serve. Just like that, another point. Yeah, and almost identical sequences right there. Lanier goes out wide to Solbeck, comes back, drops that ball right foot of the heart. Lanier caught in the transition zone, pushes them on to second serve. 
Yeah, that's what DeHart's got to do. He's got to reach in and take this third and do something with it. Yeah. Oh, how about that roll from Lanier to land it inside the court? And just that one change of putting Lanier on the left is now allowing Taylor and Lanier to move the ball around so much more. And, and you're not faulting Taylor for what he was doing, but like you were talking about, Dom, he was, he was going cross-court a little bit more. Ball popped up, made it an easier play for DeHart. That point I thought was over 25 <laughs> shots ago when they got in their first firefight, and then all of a sudden Lanier and Taylor reset it back. Wow, that's some good patience from all four of these gentlemen. Ball in hand, Sobek and DeHart two points away from moving on. Ooh, I, got, I think he got, got away, away with, with it. One. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he actually crossed his chest right there. Defensive stand by Taylor in Lanier. It was textbook backhand roll right there from Lanier. As the ball goes up, you see his paddle drop, right? So paddle gets down below the ball, rolls up underneath that ball, brushes it perfectly. Power overhead from DeHart, second serve. The lead was once six, it is now down to two. Taylor reaching in, and it is down to one. Well, and there's a, definitely a momentum shift toward Lanier and Taylor right now with this ball movement. Patience until that ball pops up, and then reaching in and really putting on the pressure. DeHart finally finds a spot for the side out. I mean, nice speed up here. I don't mind that speed up from Taylor, but then nice defense from both DeHart and Sobek. They fight off Lanier and Taylor again, but they get within one. They've been stuck on nine for a while. Tried to shape the ATP just a little wide. But the difference with that one is that it didn't, it wasn't as sharp of an angle. So it didn't continue through the court. It kind of stalled up. So difficult for Solbeck to shape that one. Yes! 
So almost Ooh. unconventional what I'd like to see from DeHart. He drives that third. I'd like to see him step into the fifth now. Change something up because now he's going all drive, all drop. Change something up. Change some pace up because they're just in complete stall mode here at 9. So Beck and DeHart led at the end change 6-2. They would go up 9-3. Pushes it just wide. Second serve coming. Taylor set himself up well there, but he didn't clear the body on that two hand and got jammed up and just tried to shovel it back over. Lanier oh. misses it, and Sobek and DeHart stem the tide to get back on serve. Wow, two, he was all over it. Two very big missed opportunities yes. right there for Lanier and Taylor. They should have had both of those points and been serving for the match. Hart can't make the cut. Second serve. Just long. <laughs> that stick that, volley in the middle yes. from DeHart was incredible. That was a, like, oh, crap, I popped the ball up. Yep. I got to figure out a way to get back into this. And, and he did. Match point. Sobek oh. tried to slide it down the line. It's wide. Another side out. I think I heard that correctly from Lanier. He just didn't go out. He goes way out. <laughs> Taylor and Lanier still in this on serve, trailing 8-10. Yeah. Ernie attempt into Lanky. the body there within one. Yeah, good move there from Lanier. Sees the hot's head go straight down. Yes. Point, and we are tied. Yeah, just an easy miss there from DeHart. He knows it, too. Lanier still on serve. DeHart read the Ernie, got the winner. How does he get his body out of the way of well, this? Well, it takes it right from the hip. We've seen DeHart do that plenty of times. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes! 
off the edge guard, Taylor and Lanier. They have a match point. Wow, I mean, I think Sobek's trying to pull his title down because the ball's probably going out. No, he took a full swing at it. I, I, it almost looked like he, he yeah. didn't see it clearly. Indecision. Yeah. It. And Taylor and Lanier Point. are moving on. They overcame a six-point deficit to advance to the semis in three. We will hear from them when we come back here at the Al APP Newport Beach Open. It's less beer. That tire. Flavor is a way of life, and every dish is a work of art. La Victoria, inspired by L.A. Flavor since 1917. What a comeback from Zach Taylor and Spencer Lanier in Game 3 as we take a look at our Zimmer Biomet recovery moment of the match. Yeah, the move to put Lanier on the left at 9-3 made the difference there for Taylor and Lanier. The ball movement improved. They created opportunities. And we see here in this one the defense steps in as well. So, so, so back good. scrambling. And then it's going to come down to the Ernie. Oh, there's the, here's the defense coming back into it right there. Reset, defense into offense, and then the Ernie from the heart just goes deep. Lanier and Taylor moving on to the semifinals. We have Dominic Catalano who's caught side for our Franklin post-match interview. All right, Zach, I'll start with you. You guys take game one, go down game two. What did you guys change going into game three? Well, I just know we had to be patient, and uh, the, ding the ding points were long, but Spencer, like, halfway through, wasn't going our way. We just switched sides, and it just changed every pattern, uh, and we were super comfortable playing the other side, and I think that's what got us through. And, Spence, we were talking off camera. That was something that you guys changed at 9-3. You said, hey, you're going to play left. Zach's going to play right. What did you do to change things up? 
Um, at that point, we were down that much. We were like, we might as well try something, right? Mix it up. Um, decided to just move it around. You know, Zach's grading the right. I'm grading the left, too. I mean, we can switch it up. We're a dynamic team. And yeah, we ended up just, you know, getting out of our own heads, like me, and uh, just making dinks, making dinks. So. All right, well, congratulations, boys. Moving on in this bracket. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with our next matchup here on Championship Court at the Owl APP Newport Beach Open.